Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Brandy, and I'm part of the team here at Synchro, and I will let my colleagues introduce themselves. Well, hello, I'm so sorry I am late. Happy Friday, I'm Crystal, I'm part of the team here at Synchro. Hey everybody, I'm Carla. I am currently the onboarding manager and I'm here to help out however I can. Good to see you all. Woo! We are so excited to have you, Carla. Thanks for joining us today. And yes, Carla, you're going to see Carla's face pop up in these more frequently. We're really, really excited to have her here. She works alongside of our users to get them up and running really quickly. So she's got some good stuff for you and very experienced part of our technical support team too. So she brings that side of it, which uh, I super appreciate. So what we're going to do here today, um, Really, any questions that you guys have, this is a safe place for you guys to ask anything that's been on your mind. If you want us to deep dive into any features, you can feel free to pop those in for us as well. There's no set agenda. So the next 57 minutes of our time is your time too. And uh, we're excited to help you guys out. I've also had people that'll ask questions about, you know, hey, does anyone else use this integration? Or what are your thoughts here? And a lot of you guys will chime in and help each other out too. So we really like that that piece of this um, this hour too. We're gonna use the Q&A for you guys to ask questions. That's the most efficient for us. And if you see us looking at another uh, screen, then that is what we're doing. We're just reading your questions. And then the three of us will probably be dropping some links into the chat box for you. Those might be videos or KBs, um, any kind of docs that we feel might be useful based on the questions that you guys ask today. Um, this will be recorded. It is being recorded. So we'll usually post that to the YouTube channel same day sometimes. Uh, it may be Monday, but that'll be available for you guys later on. And we'll try to call your name too, just so in case you're you're doing some other things, you can say, oh, that's my question. Um, and, and you guys can be alerted at that point. But um, we've got happy Friday. So happy Friday to you all. Um, Keith says, I have no audio input, but I can hear fine. Can you hear us? I think in the beginning too, we were muted for a while. I wanted to wait till we we're, you know, all here and we've all had crazy morning. So we're all here, we're present, we're ready to help you guys out. So feel free to go ahead and start dropping those things in or we're gonna talk about who knows what. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Yeah, the silence, you're like we don't get a lot of questions. You, you never know what you're gonna. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you may yes. see some deer walk behind crystal there in oh, Spokane she's got like the wilderness out there and I know I will I will definitely let you know I what I might do is just throw some some of my corn I have like you guys I have a bucket like a garbage like a silver garbage can full of like this corn that I throw out and the deer just come in and it's just beautiful. So well, I'll show everyone. We may have to have a feeding section during today's <laughs> open office hours. That would be a first, right? Uh, yes, it would be. Yes, it would be. Everyone's um, so quiet today. I know. So here's my, here's my question. Maybe to the group. You know, obviously technology companies, there's like end of the year rushes and things that we do just from like a sales side and that kind of thing. Are any of you MSPs, are you doing anything? Like, are you offering any sort of like discounts? Do you guys market? What do you, I'm just curious. I'm always wondering what people are, are doing. Cause I, I certainly get, you know, I get notifications of a holiday deal or, you know, stuff like that. I'm, Totally, I'm interested to know what everyone's doing. Um, I'm reading this from Evan. Are you reading it as well, Brandy? I'm not, I was just gonna comment. I can, I was gonna comment on that too, but like if you haven't used our mailer too, I'm curious if people are using the mailer for things, just like Crystal mentioned. I, this time of year, I'm always talking about like, you know, send a happy new year message to your customers or everyone who has historically been on that gold package of yours, reach out to them and say, hey, you know, you guys want the platinum package for the coming year, pop over an executive summary report at the same time to show your value throughout the past year. Um, so as you're renegotiating, I'm also interested, like, do you renegotiate your contracts with your customers year end? Or is it just like the start, you know, it, it's all spread out, curious. 
while people are answering that question, I will answer Evan's question. So Evan asks, we have a customer that requested that they receive an email after they submit a new ticket to the system tray icon. Is that not possible or do I just have to do have some setting turned off? So if it is a single customer, it might be a little bit different than if it's everybody. So let me share my screen. And I'm hoping you all can see me I'm gonna move my questions out of here. So from the admin, we do have the ticket settings here that um, we can come down here. And the one I'm looking for is tickets do not email initial issue by default. Now the wording in here is do not, which means it kind of is opposite that, that might be kind of intuitive. If you leave this off, everyone will get an email when there's a new ticket created. So if you want everyone to get a new a ticket for a new or an email for new tickets, you can go ahead and disable this, which will then email the initial issue. So basically the initial ticket. If you want it for just one customer, like all your other customers don't want it, but that one really does, you could leave this checked and then come into a ticket automation, create a new ticket automation that says something like the ticket status is new. And then you could add in um, something around the, the, the comment being that it came in from the tray icon. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have something that says, and the customer is so-and-so, um, that's a feature request that I requested, um, but you could do something if um, you make it so that the ticket comment or the email or the, not the email, but the, the ticket that gets created from the tray icon has very specific wording in it. Um, you could add that in here. So it says something like, um, uh, something like this, where it comes in here, or what's the other one? The subject contains something. So if there was some specific wording, you could do that as well. Um, I hope that helps. Let me know if that answers your question completely or if you need something else. Super helpful. Thank you, Carla. Um, a couple of things in here. Isaac is asking about RMM alerts for offline devices, even though that has been detected on our workstation policies and firewall down warnings, but Windows and Bitdefender firewalls are showing enabled on the device. I'm not um, aware of any false alerts that we've been receiving. I should have prefaced this with, an, with you guys in the beginning, but um, if there's anything that's going to be like a one-off type of maybe issue or whatever you may be experiencing, that is going to be better suited for technical support today, just in the light of time that we have so that we're not looking in the back end. Um, it, Carla may know something on this that I don't, but I am not aware of any issues. Um, on this side, we can definitely pass that to support, but I would recommend that you open a ticket if you're experiencing this, um, for sure, especially if it's happened more than once. And it will always help you guys too. If you are creating a ticket with support, um, what's going to be most efficient for everyone and most streamlined, you're going to get the, the fastest back and forth is if you can provide, hey, on this device, you know, name, this is what's happening. That is going to avoid them having to say, can you tell me which device is or is it all devices? So if you can give as much detail as possible in the beginning, that will be super helpful. And Carla's like, yeah, please. <laughs> that exactly. that will be really, really helpful. Um, and then Keith also says, uh, we're so busy filling year-end hardware upgrades, so no one is asking prices very much. Is there guidance on per endpoint charging? Uh, we charge one monthly price for workstations with MAV and another for servers. Um, so this is all over the place. I've actually seen this posted in our forums before, and I've had people, you know, some are like $3 per endpoint and some are like $150 per endpoint. So it really does depend on like if you're in Nebraska or you're in New York City or Los Angeles um, on what those prices are. But I do have a lot of people that are that I'm speaking to that offer like three tiers of packages. And one does include like antivirus and one is just monitoring. And even you can use different features inside of Synchro. They don't cost you extra, but they could be things that you're offering them. You know, those people with your platinum packages, you're allowing them to chat with you, for example, or create tickets from the system tray menu. You may have people that... <laughs> 
Crystal's door just miraculously opened uh, by the dog. I love it. <laughs> you may have people that are on like your base plan and all you give them access to doing is creating a ticket from their system tray menu. There's tons of different ways that you can finagle it that way. Um, but I do have majority of people that I speak with that are doing a per endpoint pricing and they're doing a different price for servers versus workstations as well. Uh, that would be a great topic to have, like I'm thinking Andy or someone do like some type of webinar on how to price. I think he talked about it one day in one of our open office hour sessions, but that would be a really good topic. I have to pass that along. I love it. And I am so sorry to interrupt, but like my favorite deer actually just came in. His name is Eddie. So does everyone want to meet Eddie? This is, this is Eddie. Oh my goodness. And I just, so I just turned, when I went off camera, I just put some corn down there, but his, his antlers are really like lopsided, but I just love him so much. And he's my favorite. So anyways, that's Eddie, everybody. Welcome to open office hours. Like, is this not the coolest thing ever? <laughs> I love it. Oh, sorry that I just had to get that. Like I knew like the minute we said it, someone would saunter in. So anyways, that's Eddie. Um, okay. Um, what I was going to answer was, are there any plans to have a synchro catalog where we can give customers access to select products from a change request to, to simple things like order business cards or a new laptop? Um, one thing I will say, so there's two things I'll say. We do have a WooCommerce integration. So like if you had a marketplace, um, we do have an integration. <clears throat> the other thing that I was going to mention, and I don't have enough confidence in my knowledge of it to show it. I don't know if either one of you do, but we do have like the basically custom web, um, like where, what is it even called? Custom web apps um, that you can actually like build out where people can select and it'll start a ticket for you. And so like if they wanted to order business cards, like it would automatically like create a ticket for you to like start that process. They wouldn't necessarily be able to pick like the business cards they want and go through that order system. But I don't know if any of you have, have gotten creative with that. But there's a couple options there. I haven't dived into that like to where you could do something like, I want business cards of this type. Um, but I believe with the website integrations, you probably can do something like that. It's gonna take some work on the front end for you to build those out. But um, there's at least a top level to create the ticket off of that, um, like Crystal was saying. And it's, it's once you get in there and you look at it, you're like, oh, this makes sense. It's really pretty intuitive. So definitely check out the website integrations. Yes. All right. So um, a follow up from Evan that we talked about uh, that those emailing those emails going out automatically. So the question, if I uncheck the tickets do not email initial issue by default, when I create a new ticket for my customer and select don't email, will it still not email the customer in those instances? I'd still like to be able to generate a ticket for a customer on occasion without alerting the customer. So um, that do not email that people have, I was gonna share my screen, but it's at, in every customer, there's an option, no email of any kind. If that is checked, they're not going to get any kind of email. So if you have customers who really never wanna do anything via email, that is optional. Um, also, if you have that unchecked, but on the ticket, you have a default to do not email for that ticket. Yes, that would mitigate them getting an email um, per that automatic, uh, e tickets do not email option. Um, so those are some options around uh, not turning that on so that everybody gets it, but then turning it off on a ticket by ticket or customer by customer basis. And then Jay and Giovanni ask, we have a question about the new policy update in Synchro. We recently set up some new computers and put the RMM agent on the computers. But after we dropped them off and tried to remote into them, we were unable to with Splash Talk on our other remote access. It said remote access was disabled, but clearly it is not. So we checked the policy for the specific customer and apparently the new customers under that company policy were technically not in our remote access policy folder. 
and were under a folder in that policy that did not give remote access. This is confusing because previously, when we added the RMM agent to the computer, the remote access policy was automatic. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna read the rest of that because I, I, I believe I'm on track for what the question is. So let me show you a little bit kind of how the new policy inheritance works. So I'm gonna come here to a customer that I have set up and I have some pretty, um, I, I try to set it up so I can explain kind of how that works. So here at FNG, I have a folder that has a base policy. So everybody at FNG gets a base policy that has the uninstall code and an offline. Then in this folder, I have added a policy that adds to this backup remote splash top tray icon and Windows updates. But inside of this folder to this one machine, because let's say for example, this one person is like, I don't want the tray icon. So here I have a, a, a policy that specifies to hide the tray because this is in this as a child, this will override this. Even though this one has the tray icon, this one will override. So to your question, if you have a folder that says add splash top, but in another one that actively says to not have it, then it will hide it. And so to that, let me show you in the policies. So if you had say a new policy that had the system tray, but it is un, or it is to, not sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the remote access. If you have a policy that has this unchecked and it is a child policy, you have actively said, do not, do not put on the remote access. The only way to not have this is if it doesn't exist at all. In the new policy inheritance, anything that is not selected at all says, go ahead and ignore this. But you can also then add in something that negates a, pre, a, a, a higher up setting or policy. Um, so that ch basically children override their parents. Um, <laughs> that's the best way I have to describe it. So I hope that helps understand uh, helps you understand like how this works. If you have a child that is overriding that shouldn't be because it's ignored, not purposely undone, definitely reach out to support because we'll want to look at that. Thank you. What a funny way to explain that. It and was I'm like, like, yeah. That yeah, is I'm, I'm overridden by my children all the time. <laughs> Crystal definitely is because they're a little older than mine, but even my three-year-old, woo. <laughs> I'm just living in our world, you know? Wow. That was a great way to, to put that, Carla. So thank you. I just had a couple fun comments I wanted to share. And Keith was like, oh, dear. And and then we've got, oh, dear, Eddie. And then there's another one in here. Oh, Keith, we can usually scare up an alligator if we stream from the nearby city park. So <laughs> you're next up. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. funny. Yeah. Eddie's just, he's just out here hand, hanging out, literally probably seven feet from me, which is just amazing. Um, okay, Jeremy, I'm going to read this one out loud. Um, when setting up our recurring invoices, I've always left the key prices in sync with products if they change unchecked. With the upcoming Microsoft 365 pricing changes, I will need to update pricing. I feel I need to understand the ramifications of this option. What will happen if I change the price of an underlying price if associated contract has an override versus if it doesn't have an override? Okay, I'm assuming it only affects the pricing at the moment the actual invoice is generated from the reoccurring invoice. Yes, that is correct. It's only going to take effect when that reoccurring invoice is generated. Now I will say, if you have a contract that has override pricing set and you have that contract associated with the reoccurring invoice, whatever override pricing you have associated with the contract will still override anything else that you have in inventory. Does, am I, I just wanna make sure I'm saying that properly. That contract override will still override anything else if you have that 
associated with the reoccurring invoice because there is that spot on the reoccurring invoice where it says associate the contract. So if you have that set up, whatever you have as your override will still override that. If you don't have that set up and you have that box checked that says keep in sync, when you update that inventory items price, it will update when that reoccurring invoice regenerates. I hope that was clear and helpful. <laughs> Good question. Okay, cool. You bet. All right. I haven't read this one from Keith yet. Is or did we do? I haven't read it. Um, oh, oh, Carla. Carla? Yes. I, I, um, I love this to the point. Uh, to his point around the the policy inheritance versus the what I'm calling the legacy policies. In the legacy policies, to know what you had done. Uh, lots of people did naming like Keith is saying here where it says like RMM workstations no AV windows updates on the month at the time force reboot like you to know what you put into something you might name it like that now when I just showed you guys my um, mine I had all of that data but that's only so that I can explain to you what's in those things but now with the new policy inheritance you can have one policy that says like no tray icon and um, you don't have to name it with these big, huge, weird names anymore. So good point, Keith. Yep. Wow. Well, hmm. What else? <laughs> Everyone's asleep today. You, yeah, you, you got, you got some great minds in this room today. We're here for you. Um, oh, hear me back to policy inheritance. How about grandchildren? For instance, if grandpa says yes, and he has a tray bar, dad says hide tray bar and grandchild says yes, and show this, these menu items, will the end user get grandpa's tray items, grandpa's and child's none or just the child's? It's the grand, the grandchildren role override the parents and the grandchildren. There you go. Which also seems accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the best way to explain policy inheritance. Like now I get it. Like I, think I know now I'm going to use Carla's it. words and I'm going to be thinking about the way that she has right. her set up. So that's super helpful. See, we learn from each other too. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, let's see. David says, reports, reports. We lost the policy field per assets. Will there be new fields for folders for reports? I believe so. Is, Wait, I, I'm, I'm interested to know what reports too. Like if there was a specific one that this was affecting, that will help us as well so that we can go check in. Yeah. Policy field per assets. Yes, David, please let us know which, and then maybe we can kind of even go look at that report too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that would be good. Um, I'm reading this. Read it out loud. Is anyone using the SNMP features? Played with the SNMP walk once. If we can use Synchro to monitor SNMP enabled devices that could add that could add hundreds of devices to our estate, SNMP recipes, et cetera, and not intuitive that I have seen so far. Um, so is this, I, I'm guessing this is kind of more of just like a question for like the group, like, are we using it? Are we not? Um, and I've heard really great things actually about the SNMP walk. Like I've heard people run that and bring in a ton of things. And I also um, know that the recipes, do we still have a public um, place we can send people to, to look at recipes? Okay, yeah. I can drop that in the chat box. That would be great. That would be great because yes, we do want to build out like a community like templates for those, those recipes because um, we've heard that a ton. We think that would be incredibly valuable, save you a, a, a good amount of time as well. Mm-hmm. I can show my screen and show some a really little quick description of the way that I kind of explain the recipes. So in here, I have a couple of recipes. 
and you can add them in here. Now, I also have a kind of an example of a, a file that got pulled via SNMP walk. So I have the SNMP walk, then I used these to build out, it's actually, it was a different SNMP walk file to build out my recipes. So I came in here and for my HP recipe, I said um, for toner color, this is the OID. I'm not, I don't want any alerts for it or the serial number, cause it's gonna not, those things are not gonna change. But this is a printer, so I want to know when some of these um, uh, cartridges are low of ink. So I've added some in here, and you can see here. So this is just a short one. You can build like a big giant recipe off of the OIDs from an SNMP walk output file. Once you then have it, and you are creating the new asset, you can come in here, create the new asset. I'm going to create a manual one. We're going to just do another printer. And create that. And then from here, we're going to edit it, make it an SNMP detail. And then you can see down here, because it is a printer, it is associated to the, the, S, the asset type printer. It now offers that to me here where I can add it in. The big thing to be aware of is when you are creating that recipe, I'm gonna come back into those, the recipe creator, is that it is assigned only to the type of asset that you're building it for. So if you have multiple types of SNMP assets, you will need to build a recipe for the to not just the type, but also um, possibly like the vendor or um, it kind of depends on what uh, what you're building for. But so I have like just Linux machines or printers, um, but so you'll want to associate those correctly. It does take some work on the front end. Even those community um, places where you can get the recipes, we at this point, unfortunately, don't have like a, a importer for that. Um, but they'll give you all of the OIDs, all of the, the characteristics or name, you know, what they're pulling from so that you can use those same things. I hope that makes it a little bit more understandable, a little bit more intuitive. Um, if you have additional questions on that, Keith, let, do let us know. That was helpful. Thank you. Keith. And, and one more, Adam says, so the last one who speaks always wins that yes <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> pretty much yes um wonderful should we do our poll crystal yeah yes. i don't know i guess i can launch this one i've yeah. not launched it before but i think it's available in my account since i opened this today so um it's been a little bit since we've launched our poll and it's really just to see where you guys are in your journey with synchro um so if you guys don't mind we'd love it if you would kind of let us know where you are in your journey with synchro if you've ever seen it before if you have a trial if you're a customer a partner of ours if you've had a trial in the past um yeah we'd love to to see where you guys are at most of you guys are partners with us which is awesome and my reason for asking you guys is because Christmas is coming early for everyone who joined us today. Um, you may have seen in our um, forums that we had posted yesterday that if you were a new Synchro customer, we were offering a discounted rate for our annual plans. I just got permission. It takes a lot of extra work from our billing team, honestly, which is why we do these things for our new customers. But I did just get permission. If anyone is joining us in open office hours today and you pay for a monthly subscription of Synchro, um, you will be offered the opportunity. We can send you a link if you want to upgrade to an annual plan for the next 12 months. It'll be $1,199. So it's almost two free months. So this is 
Merry Christmas. It is a really big pain for our billing team to do this. So since you guys are a small number of people with us today, I'm like, pretty please, can we offer it? Um, and so that's pretty exciting. Uh, if you're interested and you want the code, we will um, have one made while we're in this session with you guys today. And uh, you can take advantage of that. So just wanted to share. They're probably going to be throwing daggers at me if anyone's listening in our billing department to this today, but that's okay. I asked. Can I mention again? Yes. So if you are, it doesn't matter if you are a, in a trial and you want to upgrade your account, you have until December 23rd to take advantage of our annual subscription paid up front for the year, $1,199 per technician. I'll drop it in the chat box for you. It's normally $1,428. So let's do the math, 1428 minus 1199. You save 229 bucks per technician. That's almost two free months. So, uh, and if you are a current subscriber of Synchro paying on month to month plan, we are also going to allow you to upgrade at this rate annually, which normally we don't. So you could take advantage of that. And if you have questions, just, uh, if you have an active subscription and you are on a month to month plan, you can take advantage of this. Yes, that's it. That is so exciting, Brandy. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that with everybody. You're welcome, everyone. Do yeah. it. <laughs> and if you're in the US, let's sweeten the deal. If you're a new Synchro customer, we'll throw in a mug. There you go. I wish I had my mug today. Now we're really going to get in trouble. We'll ask for forgiveness instead of permission because we didn't ask for permission on that one, but that's okay. Ooh, Crystal's got hers. I love it. That's beautiful. All right. Uh, question. Forgive me if the question was already addressed. Is there an option to import an asset after conducting a network discovery? We'd like to bulk import uh, on the platform. So. Um, you can't do that on your own, but if you reach out to support, they'll send you a file that tells you all of the fields that we'll need and how to con uh, configure those. It will be, they need to be an XLS uh, file, an Excel file. You send that back and we can import that for you. So go ahead and reach out to support at help at synchromsp.com and um, they'll get you that file and do that import for you. I just need to make a comment about the mug. The reason why I say the US is because I accidentally made a mistake of sending a mug to someone in Canada and it was like almost a hundred dollars. So just sharing, yes. That, I can't get in trouble for that one, guys. I might not be here next week. <laughs> oh, I was gonna grab this one from Jeremy. Speaking of annual billing, I'm on an annual plan, but in bringing on a contractor for a few weeks and need to add an account for him, jury duty summons for me. Mm, sorry, Jeremy. Will I be able to add him to a month to month or will I need to, or I need a prorated annual for him? So we aren't able to do like an one annual and, and some month to month. So depending on Jeremy, where you're at with your subscription, um, do you happen to know like when your annual subscription is up? If it's pretty soon, like if it's actually pretty soon, it would just be a pro prorated annual. Um, I'm sure like we might be able to work with you if it's like, if your subscription is like 10 months out and you only need this person for a couple weeks. Um, so that I would, in either way, September, okay, either way, um, we would need to do that on the back end. So an email into technical support explaining your situation um, uh, into our billing department, I think like that would be the best route to just see if there's anything that um, we can do there. Um, and then I guess on the same lines, I have a co-managed client. I am going to try to talk into Synchro license for internal ticketing and RMM access. I know I can assign them to just their own tools, but can I set her up with one month license easily? Not one month. Like if you, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. If you add them as like a per customer, um, account in in your in your synchro instance they would be 
on the same subscription plan as anyone else. So no, not able to do that. Okay. I just wanted to chime in, um, Corey, I'm gonna connect you. Um, I'm gonna create a ticket for you and then I'll, I'll chat the team. And then Derek, if you'll pop in your email address, I'm working on this stuff in the back end. So if you see me like, you know, focused over here, I'm sending you guys some emails. <laughs> Awesome. And I just, I'm going to read this one out loud from Keith because I love this. Uh, moved from Datto to Synchro recently and finding Synchro monitoring delivers fewer false alerts and using Synchro has improved our endpoint health greatly. That's really awesome to hear. I love, I love hearing those things, Keith. So glad that your transition has been positive. Um, so yeah, if anyone, ever, anyone out there is, is, is on the fence or considering, talk to Keith. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Brandy, is that email for you? Yes, it is. I'll be connecting them shortly if we can leave it for a second. Great. Well, Brandy's giving out deals. Anyone else have want any? <laughs> Ask Brandy. What you guys want? Anyone got an OID for Untangle? Anybody? Anybody? Hmm. Um. I tried to Google that because usually Googling OIDs for something, the vendors have like, right, they'll be right at the top with a whole list of their OIDs. Um, and that's not really true now for Untangle. I'm not finding a good place to do that. Um, so I would totally grab one of your untangled devices, then run SNMP walk against it, and it will pull, SNMP walk will, will pull all of the OIDs off a device. Um, so, and you can do that from another device that has the synchro agent on it that's in the same network. Um, just, uh, and uh, sorry, backing up, go to the community forum in the script, there's SNMP walk, import that, then from a device that has the agent on it, point it at the, I, the IP address of that uh, device that you want and it'll pull it and it'll grab a file like the one I showed. Hope that helps. Awesome, thank you. Corey says thank you as well. Love it. So happy to have you here, Carla. That's helpful, really, really helpful. Really glad to be here. <laughs> and and everyone oh yes we i agree. can't say that out loud but, but we agree <laughs> i know you guys can read these so we agree we agree with what Corey says love that thank you Corey. <laughs> oh and adam says plus one move from datto to synchro a year ago never look back i get chills remembering the datto days Mo better now. <laughs> Mo better now. I like that. <laughs> uh, great. That's awesome. That's really great. Let's see. We have 20 minutes left. What should we talk about? What's everyone doing this weekend? <laughs> That's like been my go-to. I feel like a, I think people are starting to do things. And then also it's like festivity type stuff. Um, okay. I'm just reading this. Um, hmm. I don't know, Jeremy, I might have to, ha I don't know if, if Carla, if you want to deep dive that one. Um, I, cause I don't know the answer to that. Um, what is, what is Champerado? Does anyone know what that is? Eggnog or Champerado? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> anyone? And taco night. Love it. We need to have like a recipes, like everyone post your favorite recipes <laughs> or like anyone local to San Diego who wants to come cook my meals for the week. <laughs> love to hire uh, a local. That is the last thing I like to do. I love to bake, not to cook. I'll bake. cook for you if you'll bake for me. 
okay, deal. But we're a little <laughs> far from each other. <laughs> <A> little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Jeremy, I, I'm not sure I understand exactly what you're asking, but it made me think of something that you could do if you aren't going to be logging in for those couple weeks. If it turns out that you're going to do jury duty and you're not going to be logging in, you could change the current user over to the person who's going to be filling in for you. And then when you come back, they can change it back for you um, so that it's your email address and your login. There would be need, need to be some coordination between the two of you because there is the passwords and you probably don't want to share a password if you use it for multiple things. Um, and then you'll have probably want to turn off MFA the, for when you switch over because they're going to need to do their own and then reverse that when you come back in. Um, so I think that might be the best way that you can get around that so that they can do that for you if you get called to jury duty. And by the way, if you do and you show up, thank you for your service. Okay, so Champerado, or am I saying it right? Champerado is a Mexican chocolate corn drink. Well, if the start of it's champ, well, like as in champagne, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually read this one out loud, Carla. Can I read it to you? <laughs> um, from David, we used to be able to see under each assets to which policy it belongs. We lost it with the new inherited folder feature. We like the new folder structure very much. It is very nice and flexible. However, we would like to see now the folder level where the asset is inherit inherited, like this asset under base level workstation AB. Thank you for story time. Um, <laughs> that's what I was like, oh, I get story time, yay. Um, there's not a way to see that in the, the way that we used to. The best way to do that, I'm gonna share my screen again. Oh, my menu keeps being weird. All right, there we go. All right, sharing my screen, <laughs> looking up uh, OIDs. Uh, so the really the only way you can do that is from an asset. There is now the view effective policy. And so it tells you, if you click on that, it tells you basically how this is built. So as you saw, I had like, uh, what was it? Uh, actually, this is a different machine, so it's not a good example based off the one I showed you earlier. But this is now a culmination of the way that each of the folder policies that this machine is in is built. So because we don't have a single policy like we used to, um, we can't say it's in this, but the effective policy is when you put all those policies together, what is it, what does it look like for this machine? That's the closest thing that we have to the old naming of the single policy. Awesome. Thank you. I love this too. Uh, Chris, I'm going to actually post this for the team because I like sharing this. We trialed several different vendors for ARM and the PSA and Datto is still harassing me. Synchro's open pricing and 30-day trial doesn't happen with vendors anymore. Everyone wants to bring you into the walled garden to trap you as refreshing that Synchro didn't do that. Well, yes, it's refreshing to, to be here. And, and obviously being in sales, it's refreshing to not have to deal with that either because that's not fun. Not fun at all. Um, let's see. George, can I, George asks, uh, tacos or burritos? And my answer to that is yes. Uh -huh. In this case, it is. And that, yes. I'm okay. all about adding like a different option in there. And enchiladas? I, yes. I have the best, I live like two exits from Mexico. And I'm telling you, I have the best Mexican food around me. It is just like my go-to, so. Love it. Um, okay. Should I read this one out loud? I haven't read this one yet. When in, in, when an invoice module, okay. When an invoice module and selecting the three options, open invoice, overdue invoice paid last 30 days, it doesn't appear to have a visual indicator for the option selected. When I select overdue invoices, all that happens is the paid refreshes and the URL adds the filter at the end. 
Is that true, Carla? It is. Um, that is something that is just the way that the, the, the it just basically filters by whatever you selected. It doesn't change the screen, it just filters. Um, if that is something that you're like, no, I would really like it to do this, definitely reach out to support with a feature request. We'll be happy to add that. Derek, just wanted to update. Um, I, I think it was Derek. I sent you the code so you can use that. If you're in a synchro trial, it's no, no secret. The code is welcome 2021. So you'll go to upgrade your account. You toggle over to annual plan, and then you'll put that code in after you put the um, card in and then or on the same page. And then Corey, I have you connected and you should be don't do anything on your side. I'll have someone on my team do that for you. So you'll be connected. Um, okay. Oh, could we have a breadcrumb list at the top when viewing effective policies so we can see where in the tree the machine is? Um, I believe this was brought up in a session that Andy was here for. Um, if I'm remembering that correctly, because I know he was like, yeah, I want that too. Um, so yes, thank you for saying that, Derek, and we'll continue to pass that along because I definitely heard that. Mm -hmm. Great, 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 great. Oh. Let's see. Oh, I don't know if that's a known issue, Derek. Carla, do you know? I am not aware of that. I'm gonna uh, take ownership of that question and you guys keep talking and I'm gonna go look and see if that's a known issue. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't heard that either. Nope. This time of year, does anyone start to just like want to like work from the couch in front of the fire? I do. <laughs> I don't have a fireplace and I'm so sad. We just moved in September and it's the first time I haven't had a fireplace and we don't really have a need for a fireplace, but it's just like, it still gets chilly and I still like to look at it and it makes me feel like it's winter and Christmas and I love that. <laughs> uh, yes, I want to work like that every time of the year. Yeah. You, yeah. Asked, you asked earlier about what people are doing for the weekend. I rented a, a motel, a hotel on, on the beach and I just remembered that they're like, it's got a bay window over the beach and it's got a fireplace. So what? I just remembered that. I'm so stoked. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Where's the invite, Carla? Crystal has some pretty exciting plans this weekend too. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It is gingerbread making time at the Hinkle House. And we go all out. We're talking. So we've got two kids. And we do, we literally like let them architect like they're in touch. So they get like cardboard and they make their plans and we do homemade and so like we have all different shapes and oh it is just the most fun gingerbread making extravaganza and adam i agree that santa can't come without a fireplace i was yeah. gonna say he comes in like a blue and gray van says the words like amazon on the side <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how santa gets here we're going um, snow tubing. I was telling Crystal this morning in San Diego at the fairgrounds. They are no clue how this is happening, but they said real snow. Um, so we'll see how that's going to work out. Real snow. Like, I don't know what to expect, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That, it'll be an adventure. <laughs> yeah. I am so jealous though, especially of Crystal's like background with the wilderness and stuff and it's snowing. And every time I talk to her and it's snowing, I'm just, I just miss it. Like you can't have winter without snow. Agreed. All right. So Derek, I looked, um, we, this is not a known issue. Um, so, um, if this continues to happen for you, make sure that you have the most, uh, updated version of the mobile app. If it continues after that, 
definitely write into support as much detail as possible. And if you could even do like a recording, that would be great um, and get that into them. And we'll start to look into that. And we'll be happy to do that. Um, and then another question from Derek recently did a sync to QBO and it put in a bunch of customers, but they wouldn't update in the app had to log out and back in for them to sync. New phone, up-to-date Android OS. Um, so that's interesting as well. Um, when you create that ticket, um, put both of those because it looks like it's all about the mobile app. So definitely mention all of that. And again, as much detail, like these are the customers that it happened with. If you happen to have that, and uh, if you can replicate it, that's beautiful and record it and get that into support um, to take a look at. Perfect, thank you. Um, let's see, what other fun topics? So I like to know what your favorite Christmas movie is. That's one of my favorite questions, but I obviously actual thing questions come first so i can read this one too <laughs> i get carried away all right um i noticed while trying to efficiently customize the columns displayed in ticket in ticket module that some may be misrepresented the issue field i think should reflect the field within the actual ticket this would make sense to be titled as type another field type perhaps renaming it to custom type this currently pulls the custom ticket types Yes. <laughs> I don't know what else to say other than yes. Yes, you are correct. That is what happens. Um, and we are aware of the naming convention um, and sort of like the conflict there. So um, we will pass that along, but that is actually, you, you're interpreting exactly what's happening accurately. I just have a comment from Jack. So he said, I used Repair Shopper for years and knew we would switch to Synchro for a while. Just waited for the Mac client update before I made the move. I used a few RMM, RMMs before Synchro, including names such as Atera. I'm much more pleased with Synchro on catching items of importance and just ease of use. Never even trialed because I knew it was going to be good. Highly recommend Synchro for your MSP. And Jack really means he never even needed to trial because he spoke with me and he just felt so comfortable <laughs> about it. <no. laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, Jack is one of our, our newest MSPs on board with Synchro. So we're super excited to have you and always love when someone transitions over from Repair Shopper to Synchro. And really that learning curve is like, just, it makes it a smooth transition. So we're happy to have you on board, Jack. Welcome. Yay. <laughs> Anyone else new, let us know. We'll give you a shout out or like celebrating mm -hmm. i think last week we had some milestones like 25 years and, and things like that so if you have jeremy says welcome jack so if you guys have uh you know anything you want to share with us we can help you celebrate today too mm -hmm. absolutely five minutes we don't even have any i've only posted one link in the chat box today and that was with the oid recipe so grab that if you haven't yet because it will disappear after today's meeting we've got a few minutes left hello it's funny some <laughs> days are like boom 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 what's the link to get the special pricing Adam, you are on board with Synchro already. So what we are going to do, shoot me your email. Um, unless it's the Adam at your business name. If it is, say yes, and I'll get you going. Don't do anything on your end. Perfect. I will connect you with support and we'll get you taken care of. <laughs> Yes, Jeremy, if that's still happening, definitely reach out to support. Oh, you want it, Brandy? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. 
if you are trialing Synchro, then you will just use the code WELCOME2021. Um, it's just the ones that are already on board with us. It's hard because there's not a section for a coupon code. So WELCOME2021 is what you are going to enter at checkout. Check out. So, uh, and then you can send me an email. If you're in the U.S., just shoot me over an email and um, we'll get you. We'll get you set up. Oh, I guess I should tell you my email. Brandy, <laughs> that would help, right? Guess it. <laughs> you're just so famous. Everyone knows it anyway. <laughs> yeah. They probably all talk to you. <laughs> I, I have all of theirs memorized, you know. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Like she, she, I don't doubt that one bit. Okay. If your owner is interested, if you need to hop on a call, if you've got an account executive, you can also, I most care about the mug. You don't want the 200. So you realize you don't want the $229 discount. <laughs> These <laughs> mugs, I'm telling you, they're hot commodity. Um, we'll get you taken care of. But yeah, Isaac, if you have questions or if your owner wants to hop on a call and ask any questions, happy to do that too. <laughs> awesome. All right. Yes. Have a fantastic weekend to you, Jeremy, as well. Um, let's see. So yeah, I think that as we as we wind down, if you have any additional questions regarding the amazing offer, brand, just um, for everyone, just email her directly. She put her email in the chat box. Um, and I think, so do they still have to the 23rd? Like if they're an existing pair? Or? If it's an existing customer, you should do it today because there's no promises that they're going to allow me to do this after. And so really people who have been writing in and asking to change, we haven't been approving that. So like they know right now, um, our support manager knows like we're in this session and that we're offering it. So, yes. So now's the time. Now. Now's the time. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, with that said, I'm. let me just double check through the Q and A. Um, I just wanna make sure there's no other questions regarding the synchro stuff. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, autographed mug. Autographed mug. Oh, hey, okay. I got you. <laughs> Jack, send me an email. <laughs> we're feeling, we're feeling generous. We're feeling festive today. Um, well, everyone have just a fantastic weekend. Carla, enjoy your stay with the fireplace. That sounds lovely. And Brandy in her real snow tubing. <laughs> Let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> yes, we'll report back next week. Um, anyways, thank you guys. I'll let Brandy, you can close us out. Thank you all. Super excited to have you today. And Carla, thank you so much for joining us and providing that input that you have. So have a great one. Glad to be here. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.